Hello, my name is Catherine and I'm here at the conference with my colleague Freni and we're here to talk about our experience of turning firewood from a vector of deforestation to a vector of reforestation in Haiti. So where we had the chance to test this idea is uh, through the climate project. Uh, which uh, happened from 2017 to 2021 in the north and northeast of Haiti. Um, its uh, reason of being was to help local communities to fight against climate change. Um, it was uh, implemented by Le Ceci, the Centre d'études et de coopération internationale, for which Freni works, and uh, Viridis Terra International for which I'm a consultant. There were also some uh, local implementation partners. Um, importantly, there was Jean and Oja, who are two groups of uh, young professionals in agriculture and also a local university. Uh, the project was financed by the Quebec government through its program for international climatic cooperation and also um, by the Canadian government through the voluntary cooperation cooperation program of SOCI. And uh, finally, we had the chance to go back on the project this year through another financing by the United Nations Foundation. And to make credits complete, um, I just want to specify that I'll be the one talking for now, but um, Freni uh, is also here at the conference and will be happy to uh, answer questions later. He's been very important to in this project. He's uh, making it happen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you will have some precious answers. And also, uh, we are uh, quite a big team, so um, it's me talking for now, but there's a lot of people behind that project. Um, there were four components to the project, but we're just going to concentrate on the first one, sustainable energy forests for time's sake. Uh, but just so you know, we also designed some energy efficient kilns, which would be another interesting subject to talk about. Um, uh, industrial size uh, composting site, which uh, help provide some quality compost for the energy forest and also manage waste better and some uh, training for climate change awareness get back to our subject, energy forests. So how do we make it happen? How, um, how could we think that we could turn a deforestation vector into a reforestation vector? So first things first, we uh, needed to acknowledge that uh, firewood is important in Haiti and is there to stay. Um, because it is a very important source of energy in Haiti. I think it's 70% of all the energy. And also because it's a really important source of income for families in remote regions. Often um, it will be like in many places in the world, a kind of a bank that uh, if you need money, you can just cut a few trees, carbonize them and then sell them to the city and you have your money. So that's very precious and really hard to... Uh, um, to change into something else. And the other thing is that there are already a lot of uh, degraded land which are not proper for agriculture and that could be proper for just forests, in our, in our case, um, for energy forests. So <laughs> that's still a big bet to be uh, putting forests on uh, degraded land and stopping uh, deforestation. So the idea was um, to uh, to make sure that the trees would enrich the soil and that one day those lands wouldn't be degraded anymore and maybe you could even do agriculture on them again. And uh, also uh, there is the fact that by producing uh, wood, firewood, you are encouraging the farmers to plant more trees because it's a good source of income. Um, and finally, by planting those uh, forests, you are reducing the pressure on natural forests. Um, to make, make sure this idea could work, we had to, uh, to have some very specific criteria uh, that would um, 
yeah. <laughs> so the first one is uh, the tree selection. Uh, first, we wanted to have trees that would be uh, able to fix it uh, nitrogen, um, just to add to the many benefits that trees could have on degraded land, such as retaining erosion with their roots and putting some biomass on the soil with their, their leaves, etc. Another thing was the fast growth in high wood density, which make uh, good firewood. And fi finally, very important, uh, we wanted trees that would uh, easily grow back once cut, so that once a forest is installed, it's there to stay, um, and it doesn't need too much management, so that uh, we are not doing deforestation again. Um, knowing that, there were three species that caught our attention, which were uh, Lucena leucocephala, Prosopis juliflora, and uh, Acacia auriculiformis. And uh, we were in a very experimenting stage, so we tried polyculture and monoculture. We also wanted uh, the trees to be planted in high density, because uh, what we wanted was a lot of biomass, not necessarily trees with a big diameter, which is what you would want if you want to do uh, more lumber. Um, and also because people mostly cut trees with machetes, so <laughs> it's actually nice to not have such a, a big uh, stems. And uh, also we went for direct sowing, um, thinking that it could uh, lower costs because you don't have to have tree nurseries. And also, because we were going with such high density, if we had had seedlings, it would actually have been very costly. And kind of a bet we were taking uh, was that they would necessitate uh, lower initial nutrient in water because they were so small at first, um, which uh, proved quite efficient, actually. And then the steps quickly were uh, land characterization, so making sure that we're just planting in degraded soil and having a little bit more information on them to see afterwards uh, what works, what doesn't. Um, then seed collection and preparation, uh, planting. Oh, I forgot to say also, uh, we put some soil enrichment, which was uh, compost, uh, river sediment and biochar. Um, after that, there were a few uh, monitoring uh, moments uh, where we could uh, pinpoint was to what to readjust, uh, which was basically fertilization, controlling grazing, reseeding, such things, and finally harvesting and regeneration. So here are the results. Um, so when we started the project, uh, it was quite a hard context. There was a historical drought in the first two years um, and also uh, some major social political unrest at that moment. But then again, uh, surprisingly, the trees grew in uh, most plots. We had a really nice uh, greenery going on. That was after, uh, yeah, after two years of the project, this one. Um, and uh, here are some keys that we found to the success. Um, uh, the first one is uh, the role of food crops. So one thing is to encourage people to work with us, the landholders. We, uh, we were giving them seeds for crops and that really <laughs> helped to have uh, followers with us. And uh, the other thing is um, in some communal sections where the project was implemented, facilitators decided to plant those crops, those seed crops, with the, tr with the trees. Um, and I know that it's a bit incoherent, incoherent sorry, with what I said earlier, in the means that we, um, um, we don't want to plant those energy forests in places that could be used for agriculture, but then again, a lot of agriculture in Haiti is happening in places where there is, uh, where it is degraded just because there's not enough land otherwise. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> it's not the best place to plant food crops, but then again, it is encouraging people to take really good care of their trees. And we've seen a big difference between the places where they were planted together and where they weren't planted together. So it ended up being a good decision. Another thing is not uh, all species were equal in the project. Uh, the prosopis 
didn't work at all for us. One thing is we weren't kind of in the right region for it to grow well. And the other one was that it was really tricky to uh, prepare the seeds. Um, Lucena was a really interesting species, but there was one big, big problem, especially uh, knowing that it was um, in a big drought season, is that it was a good, <laughs> a good tree to graze for animals. And um, yeah, so very little Lucena survived, um, especially because uh, there wasn't a lot of food because of the drought. So yeah, <laughs> and um, but it's an interesting species because it grows quickly and also once you cut it, it will regrow. If you cut it the right way, it will capice and grow back by itself. And then finally, there's acacia. This was really the one that was easiest to grow for us because it wasn't grazed and it grew well even in the drought. Uh, one problem is that once you, you cut it, it won't regrow by itself, so you need to have a regenerating strategy. And uh, finally, I guess there's no surprise there, uh, polyculture was beneficial. Um, in our case, it kind of protected a bit the Lucena uh, from gra grazing and uh, yeah, helped its uh, survival rates. Um, another key to success was the power of delocalized action. As I said, uh, there was a lot of, unpolit uh, of political unrest at the time and um, uh, the fact that the projects were happening outside of the city was already <laughs> making it easier. And then also there were there was one facilitator by commune section where we worked, so they could really help on the ground. And uh, the the gens, the the group of youths who were implied with the energy forest, could also kind of multiply the efforts on the land. Um, I'm gonna quickly show you two projects, and uh, I mean uh, to the case of uh, two landholders, um, and how they uh, pass through the project. Uh, so one is Iveni. Um, she has this land that you can see, which is in a slope, and uh, she used to cultivate peanut. But um, when you cultivate, when you harvest them, you have to dig in the ground. It makes the ground softer, and if there's nothing to retain the soil, soil it will leave, and you will have degraded soil. And that's what happened here, especially because it's in a slope. Um, so yeah, there was nothing she could grow anymore on it before she participated in uh, the project. Um, and uh, as you can see here, uh, trees were <laughs> that was the first year trees were starting to grow, and um, that's the. Uh, one or two years later. So uh, yeah, it was like a dense forest cover and almost ready to harvest. And she was really happy. She was even like taking some seeds to uh, expand her forest around. Another interesting experiment is uh, uh, Milius, who um, that was just two years after he had like, his trees were as high as, um, in other cases, a uh, three year old forests because he was taking really good care of them and another really interesting fact with him is that his lucena also grew this is the lucena one of the rare ones of the project and the big thing is that milius is really respected in his community so um like people wouldn't let uh, their animals come and graze uh, and that's how he controlled gra grazing so there's something to learn from there and yeah no, uh, <laughs> that's a, a good example. And here you can see, um, so a quarter of his land was in energy forests, uh, that's on the left, and the rest was the fallow land, so uh, he could harvest trees there too, but at a loss, uh, less, a <laughs> lot less dense. Um, so he had to harvest on a higher superficy. Um, yeah, so quickly, uh, the Klima, Klima project in numbers is uh, three campaigns, seeding com campaigns. Um, it, um, it implicated 223 owners and uh, we planted 200 hectares of energy forests. Um, and finally, as I said, we had the, the chance to go back on the land this year. Um, so here are quickly a few uh, conclusions we got from uh, going back. Uh, one thing is we found out that a lot of the 
forest was healthy and still growing so that was a really uh, <laughs> good news um, there was also like more uh, appreciation from owners and neighbors of these forests they can see how it changes uh, the microclimate there's birds coming back um, it's also increasing the yield of associated crops um, so yeah the people are, is, are really gaining enthusiasm and want to plant more energy forests. Uh, one thing we did find out that we uh, needed to improve was <clears throat> forest harvesting and regeneration techniques. So when the big cl clima project started uh, or finished, um, the first trees were just ready to be harvested. So we made the first training session to show people how to uh, cut so that it would grow back but the this idea didn't stick really well um, so this time around we decided to change a bit a bit the techniques we were proposing so that they would be closer to what people already know and um, also we gave some more workshop by we I mean Freni actually <laughs> um, and uh, also there were 60 more hectares of forest planted we made a few adjustments once again a few improvements from what we learned and 74 owners were implied in this new plantation um, so that's it for now thank you for at your attention and uh, I hope we can uh, discuss this all further uh, in the discussion period thank you